Hey, good evening. Uh, Tim here with Mixed Aircraft Solutions. Uh, another quick video. I'll show you what I'm doing, what I'm working on. Uh, let me flip the camera around here. This here is a 1946, I think. Or no, no, wait. 1965. I work on too many airplanes. 1965 7 ECA Champ Satabria, all kind of the same line. Um, we're gonna recover the fuselage. I just got done taking the gear off. It's sitting over here. You got the spring gear with Cleveland wheels and brakes. Um, just a couple things to show you what we're doing. Uh, I made a rotisserie. Uh, for most of the stuff that I work on, it's a lot easier, um, you, so you don't have to lay on your back and um, work over your head. A friend of mine kind of did this, though. He, uh, with his Super Cubs and stuff that he works on, he did one of these universal joints. And I had an old drive shaft laying out in the backyard. I was like, hey, yeah, I can do that. So I went and got some scrap steel. Welded up a front cross member here. I just left the old motor mount bolts in there. Uh, made a bushing for them. Tightened everything down so you can see it's right to the, the structure of the fuselage. So from basically from right here to right here is the boot cowl. So that's a metal piece there so there's no fabric here. And then from here backwards up on the tail that'll all be fabric and of course on the belly same place so this whole section this right behind the firewall in the engine is just a metal piece called the boot cow and uh, you see the fuel lines come from both sides into this guy uh, they come from the back to back of the fuel tank and the front of the fuel tank they get plumbed into here and then this is your fuel selector right here and then it goes out through your gas escalator up front. And <clears throat> here's your trim mechanism right here. It pulls on a cable back and forth, which moves the trim tab, uh, the throttle, and the carb heat right here. This is probably carb heat or mixture, one of the two. I don't know. I'm forgetting on which one goes where. But anyway, it's an engine control. Um, we went ahead and, let me get this out of here. We went ahead and, uh, got new formers from Rainbow Aircraft because the ones that were installed in this were probably original factory and they were the three ply, they were falling apart and warped. So he does a really nice job on them. There's his logo right there, Rainbow um the part number these were made in Jul july of 22 uh but they're a five ply uh much stronger and he puts a nice coat of varnish on them has these uh copper fair leads in here for the trim wire to go through uh so that goes through the, to the back and uh here's the other side of my rotisserie i just made this today too I uh, got it hooked up with the tail spring and we stacked up some washers to give us some space so we can glue the fabric under here and get it around. I made the mistake when I did the Super Cub, I bolted these straight up to this piece here and I couldn't glue uh, up underneath here because I didn't have any room. So I thought it out a little bit differently and uh, so this way I, I got... A finger's worth. I mean, I got some fat fingers, and they fit up underneath there pretty good. So we can get fabric glued up there really good. And here's the other universal joint I made. I just welded on a new piece. I found a piece of pipe that would fit. Cut the universal joint off. Welded the the new pipe to it that would slide inside here. And the only thing I got to do is I got to drill a hole that I can run a pin through so it doesn't... Uh, flop over or pull out and that would be a bad thing if we 
were to go to move this whole fuselage and this come pulling out and it would fall down and probably bend something. But this is just a piece of quarter inch plate that I cut, made it fit in here, and then I trimmed the angle um, and then welded a couple nuts on the bottom side so I didn't have to try to fish a nut in there. And then just use some uh, grade five hardware to bolt that on there with a stack of washers to get that there. And then I had a piece of angle right here that I welded in, got it all nice and tidy, bolted on those four bolts. And so this uh, universal joint, what this does, it uh, kind of makes up for any misalignment between the front and the back. As you can see, I have like a little T down here. And if you look, they're not really, they're pointed towards each other, but they're not in direct line with each other so they're separate and so this will kind of wiggle back here and it can kind of bind up so the universal joint kind of takes up for that and then that way it can turn over so we can just roll it over just like this pretty easy with one hand here just to kind of I don't have any anything to to pin it so um, it rolls over really cool. Uh, the stringers, you can see the profile here. It's a T stringer. I actually cut these out on my table saw that I have here at the shop. It's a, I don't know, a 10 inch table saw that I bought at an auction that was, um, the guy was died or something and they sold it and I got it for a couple hundred bucks. Uh, it cuts real nice, has a good fence on it. And Andrea, my helper, and I, uh, a couple weeks ago, we, we cut these out. And these are made out of Douglas Fir Clear. It was not cheap for the, for the uh, supply or the stock. I just got a 1x6. Um, and they're, I don't know, 3 quarter, 7 eighths of an inch thick on the width. And I cut this out with the saw blade. And then routered this out with a quarter round. And then these stringers here, same thing. I just cut them out in strips. There's two wider ones which go on the bottom of the formers. And then there's the three that go underneath the belly. They're a little bit thinner. So we cut out the wide ones first. Put those in there, or thicker I should say. And then uh, did the bottom ones. And then we cut out all the T's. And that took literally all day to do um, for both of us. It was a good learning experience for my helper, though, how to use a table saw. Um, the owners are going to come down on Monday, and we're going to change out the floorboards. They got some new floorboards from the Rainbow Guy up in uh, Moses Lake. And they're going to put... Uh, new floorboards in and we're we'll finished cleaning up all along the longerons here to get them nice and clean for the fabric attached to and we'll do a really good once over on it and we'll start covering it but not until we get the headliner uh, my friend Shelby in Tennessee is making up the headliners for us uh, I'm actually having them make two because as you can see here, I have a Cetabria hanging from my ceiling uh, that needs the uh, headliner. And as you can see, all the formers and stringers are already done. Cables are all made and done on those. Uh, so we're almost ready to cover on this, uh, but I need a headliner and I just kind of put it up in the rafters for now until we got that and since Shelby was going to make me one. I said, make two of them. That way I can do this one. So anyway, that's the project for <laughs> today. Uh, the other projects have been just regular annual stuff, trying to get to one of the major um, sheet metal projects that we got. We got two of them. One's the 210 over there. Can't really see it. It's right there, the 210. And then I have a a uh, beach, beach uh, musketeer outside that needs a lot of attention. 
So anyway, um, if you're into recovering, uh, doing some fabric work on a fuselage, whether it's a new one or a uh, old restoration like this, I highly recommend doing a universal joint. Something up here um, makes it easier to make a rotisserie. You could probably make a rotisserie for, oh, probably three, four hundred bucks, you know, depending on where you get the steel and if you get uh, clean steel or if you just get uh, scrap or uh, rem steel. Uh, you can make it a little cheaper if it's rem. So anyway, that's it for today. It's uh, about a 10 minute video. I haven't made one of those in a while. Uh, usually I try to keep them around three or six minutes, but hey, if you like it, follow me, subscribe, hit the like button, do all that business for the YouTube and thing. I am i don't get paid or anything, but I'll kind of show you along what we're doing. So have a good night. Happy New Year. Cheers.